what's going on guys I know everything's all changed angles wise whatnot I have moved my computers uh, my, and I'm still packing up some old stuff for the you know, spring cleaning etc etc and so I'm looking at revamping the modeling station so more modeling videos will be coming out real soon and so I figured someone in my discord turned around and said to me hey Cobra do you know that there's a new Sherman added and um, are you going to add it to your collection as you guys may or may not know I am a avid fan of the uh, M4 Sherman platform that includes the M6 uh, M8 uh, sorry not the M6 the uh, the tier three, which is the M2 MT, which is the the the, the uh, beginning of that platform, it didn't go anywhere. Um, mostly because typical American thoughts was just strap more machine guns to it. So what I want to do is gonna go French, British, Russian, American, and I'm gonna go three, four, five, six. Now. Uh, right here, the M2MT was the precursor to the Sherman. Um, what really gives it away is the bogey wheels. Um, this is the beginning of the bogey wheel platform. This is what's also on the M3 Lee. It's also on certain other platforms, i.e. the M series, M2, M3, uh, etc., uh, which led into the M4. It's starting to catch on with me. Now, this is where it leads into the T6. This was the prototype Sherman, uh, as you can tell, because of the uh, machine guns. Now... These machine guns had no way of uh, pivoting left or right. In other words, they weren't in a ball, ball socket yet. Uh, like I said, this is an early, early, early Sherman. Still got the typical American thoughts of let's just keep clamming and, and, and cramming and cramming and cramming and cramming more and more uh, machine guns to it. And so uh, that's what led into this, which is the... Uh, M4A1 variant of Sherman um, as you can see the machine gun is now on a ball socket which means it can uh, I think it's got a 30 degree arc traverse uh, left and right and five or seven degrees vertical and three degrees no four degrees uh, down if memory serves if memory serves and then of course Canada said we can do one step better and made the Ram 2. Uh, again, this is based on the Sherman platform, as you can tell by the bogey wheel systems, uh, as well as the front drive gearbox. Uh, top half is sand cast, bottom half is bolted and riveted on. Uh, unfortunately, Canada wanted to use the British quick firing six pounder gun, or is it the two pounder gun? I don't remember. Uh, Mark 4 is the. Yeah, quick, quick firing six pounder. I was right, six pounder. Um, because Canada at that time was sharing the same ammunition as uh, England and the, the Commonwealth. So so was Australia. Australia had their version um, that is not really classed as a Sherman, but they had their 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 version of a Sherman, so to say, uh, which then uh, led into the e. Well, first things first, that led into the T14, which is a Sherman with extra armor and whatnot bolted onto it which leads into the m it which leads right here sorry which leads into the m4 improved m4 improved evolved into the t14 t14 didn't go anywhere because they didn't improve the um transmission they didn't improve the engines or anything like that i believe this was a dual bank engine at the time when they tested it it was a chrysler dual bank uh, and they kept having issues with it but of course, then that led into the upgrade system, which led into the jumbo. Uh, this jumbo does not have the upgraded turret, although it is unlocked. If we look, it is unlocked. I just choose not to use it because the stock turret has 152 millimeters of armor all the way around, which means it is, it is a hold down beast at tier six. Uh, stock ammo is just not gonna pen it. Um, and then that led into the EZ-8 Sherman. Um, as you can see, called Betty, named after my grandmother. Now, the reason why I'm showing you the Soviets and various others is because I also have the Thunderbolt. I also have the Fury. And yes, 
I even have the M4 A3 76 W. Now the W means wet rack, which means inside this tank, sh uh, it should be right at the end of this bogey wheel, beginning of this bogey wheel. So about here in this area is wet stowage, which is uh, a box with water in it. And inside that is the more volatile ammunition, so the APCR um, and various other ammunitions, and especially like high explosives, things of that nature. Experimental shells even will put into the wet rack. That's what the W means. The W means wet rack. And so what that entailed was that means that if the tank came across a tiger or a yag panther or even a panther, it could just swap out to that shell and knock that tank out. If it came across a Panzer III, Panzer IV, uh, things of that nature didn't really worry about regular 76 shell could take care of that uh which then led in to of course you've got the land lease versions you've got this horrible monstrosity hybrid um this thing has no gun depression literally five degrees of gun depression it 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 can aim up but it can't aim down um typical soviet style which was if in a hurry load nothing but high explosive in the tanks you use them as makeshift artillery no joke that was the soviet plan which is why the kv2 the kv1 um even the even the su series if you actually look the su series or the su85 uh um, the su152 etc they were originally designed to be mobile artillery pieces not tank destroyers so technically they should be arty but they're not uh and then we've also got the lozia's m4 uh a2 sherman which then leads us onto the british Sherman Mark III, then leads us on to the Sherman Firefly, and of course the VC Firefly. Uh, then we keep going, and that leads us on to the French M4 A1 FL10. Now, there is a Sherman here. I do own it, but it's not showing up for one reason, and that's because it is tier 7. No, oh, sorry, tier 8. And that is... The M4 A1 Revelerice, aka the early variant uh, of the uh, Super Sherman. And that is exactly what this is. It is an early version of the Super Sherman. Um, and if you don't know what it is, the, the, when Sherman tanks were done with World War II, a lot of nations sold them to third world countries like Sudan, South Africa, uh, Malaysia, um, various other smaller smaller countries that couldn't afford to, to start a tank program but had enough funds to buy a few tanks, even Brazil. And I know Brazil also bought Walker Bulldogs. Now, when America and England sold Israel a whole bunch of tanks, uh, America sold them Shermans, England sold them Centurion 1s. Uh, I believe we even sold them some Centurion 3s, but don't quote me on that. Um, and so what Israel wanted was strong firepower but in a tank that they already owned and had and and could get parts very easily running gear bogey wheels transmissions gearboxes uh, 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 uh drive lines engines uh, turret casings gun mantlets uh, uh things of that nature and so they looked at the sherman program saw what the Eng english were doing with the sherman firefly and realized what was the upper limit capabilities of a sherman this is where America popped up and said, well, we've stuck in a 90 millimeter on a Sherman. No joke. They did in testing. They stuck. They stuck a 90 millimeter gun on a Sherman. The reason why it was not successful was because the recoil would damage the gun, the, 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 the turret mantlet. And would also crack the hull. If the hull was a poor casting and they tested it, they'll notice that they would be, they magnaflux it. Um, and if you don't know what magnafluxing is, magnafluxing is where you take iron particles and you put it over a piece of metal that you think is, is smooth and has no issues. And then you apply voltage to it, basically turn it into a huge magnet. And the iron particles will literally be absorbed by any cracks that you can't see with the human eye. Okay, so not a lot of people know that, but now you do. And so that's called magnafluxing. A lot of, a lot of uh, I, I, I learned about it in, in being in the British Army. 
but uh, magna fluxing is also used a lot in uh, uh, automotive applications to see if engine blocks are cracked if uh, cylinder heads need resurfacing things and actually they magna flux it well that's what the u.s army did was they was magna fluxing the holes of the shermans and realized that there was hairline fractures going all the way through the sand cast turrets so they even tried coming up with an old school a british uh, uh, like tog 2 style turret where it was all uh, riveted and bolted and even then it still could not handle the recoil even when english technicians came over and showed them to you know, add a, a recoil spring and you know stronger recoil spring and things that actually change in the mechanism they, they tried everything the 90 millimeter gun was just too powerful for the basic sherman turret and turret ring so what the israeli forces did was well somehow they they paid attention to what england did because some english technicians and a few others and i believe even a german technician uh went over because you gotta understand germany even captured shermans Yes, Germany captured Shermans. Germany even captured T-34s, KV-1s, and even Churchill 1s and Churchill 3s. Okay? Germany captured quite a lot of Allied vehicles, which is why I don't understand why they're not in World of Tanks as a premium tank for the German faction. I just, I just don't get it. They should be. But they're not. Same as uh, German captured vehicles for the Soviets. The Soviets even captured Panzer 3s, Panzer 2s, Panzer 4s. It, it, it would not be remiss if you actually do it like i said do a bit of research you'll find out that every nation during world war ii was stealing from each other they thought a tank was knocked out realized it was a minor thing like i don't know bogey girl got jammed or a spring snapped and they couldn't limp it back home in base because they were surrounded so they would abandon the tank and didn't realize they couldn't scuttle the tank in time so what they would do is the germans would capture it grab a, a, another Sherman that they, they five finger discounted or another tank, you know, swap the part out and you're, go you're golden. Um, the only tanks after a while that the, the Germans refused to steal were T-34s because they were just that bad. I'm not even joking. Um, what they would do, and there's various pictures of them, I'll, I'll probably post one up in this video, you'll see a uh, uh, German captured T-34s where they've put in Panzer III cop, uh, Commander's Couplers uh, on top just so that they could see the, op the, the vision and the optics were so bad. Um, and, and, and even then the Germans said there's, there's no point because the tank itself is just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Which is why a lot of German tankers didn't fear the didn't fear the t-34 they laughed at it because they knew the t-34 could not shoot on the move they knew the t-34 didn't have radios which means the community inter communications were, were piss poor i mean they were still doing flags for fuck's sake you know what i mean so don't worry about it that to the point where even german tank commanders were telling raw raw recruits if you see a t-34 shoot the one in the back not the one up front because he ain't going to see you it's the one in the back who is so shoot the one in the back and you can shoot the next one that's in the back and the next one that's in the back and then the next one that's in the back and before you know it that poor t-34 who's just nee, me, nee, me, nee, mr mcgoohan thinks he's with a squad of 11 when he's down to like three tanks because the rest were all got taken out is what it is um this is why i still think that if you want to if you want if wargaming wants to do historical accurate uh, game modes i'm sorry <laughs> But your T-34s will seriously need to be nerfed into the fucking ground because they were not the super machines that you portray them to be here in World of Tanks. So anyway, long story short, yes, I do own the new Sherman. Uh, it is roughly, where are you? It's right here. I haven't played a single game in it. I don't even have any equipment in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw some equipment. Now, it's got a different equipment loadout than other Shermans, um, namely if we look at some tier 6s, so if I go here and I I, I just go boop, 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 and I just look, and even then if I want to limit it down I just put M4, okay, so what we're going to do is we, why is a Soviet in there, Get out. and we want to look, um, if you look at the Thunderbolt, speed, Oh, they did modify it so that the Shermans all get a mobility slot. Intra Aha, okay, so I stand corrected. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's take a look. What are we going to do? Uh, 370 view range is my crew stock, I believe it is. Yeah, it's a stock crew. So what I will, what because I have access to better crew, which I do. So, I mean, there's Queen Maeve right there. There's Billy Butcher. I've got access to much better crews, as you can see. I mean, I've got some 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 tankers who aren't even hired yet. You know what I mean? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw Queen Maeve in there from the pattern. Uh, what? Do I want to throw Oliver? Yeah, we'll throw Oliver in there. I'm going to throw my pattern crew in here because the pattern uses the same amount of people. No, it doesn't. Oh, that's right. Patton doesn't have a radio operator. Commander's a radio operator, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So, what I will do for a radio operator, I will throw in my one from my Easy 8. So, she's a mixed crew. That's fine. Doesn't matter. So, even with crew bonuses and a few other things, we've still only got barely 400 meters view range. So, at this tier, we're going to need view range. No ands, no ifs. No buts. We are going to need you range. So that's what we're going to do. So in our mobility slot, let's take a look really quick. Um, improve rotation, traverse of gun, hole traverse, dispersion, vehicle movement. Um, no. Okay, we'll leave that till last. Now. We need view range, so we're going to slap on optics. Are we going to go with the typical uh, um, rammer? Because you are going to need that. See, if we just put right now, we're at 2.3, 2.2, sorry, bunch up to 2.4. Uh, yeah, we'll put the rammer in there. Now, this tank should come with a vertical stabilizer, but it's not depicted. So, do we want to throw? fans in there which will get the gun down quicker aim time quicker dispersion still the same but we go to 2.5 um yeah we'll do that now again this is on my na this is on my north american account okay you can tell because the d up top is capitalized and i'm in a clan t-i-l the iron legion um i'm not in a clan on the north Amer on the, the uh, british server on the na server so uh let's let's stick with this but i'm going to stick with the automatic fire extinguisher i'm not going to go with a can of cola yet and so what i will do is let's take a look at yeah, the ammo is going to be the stock icky sherman barely can pen shit uh sort of ammo loadout so we'll take that plus we're going to see tier rates we are going to see tier rates i don't think this gets pre preferential matchmaker all right now I'm not going to run any boosters because again I'm just doing this quick video to show you guys that yes I do own the uh, M4A3 76 Sherman and I've even decided to name this Sherman. This Sherman's name is called Frankie. It's Frankie Jr. Named after a lovely little boy called Francisco Carlos. <laughs> Alright so while we're waiting on the matchmaker Bear in mind, I'm going to have some high ping, is what it is, so let's go down to here. Now bear in mind, yes, I know, I was filling you all in and all you saw was my face, so I just wanted to let you know what I've got in there crew-wise, whatnot. You'll see more after the battle, if there's going to be one, but you will see more here shortly. <sighs> it has been a corker of a day, guys, it really has, in fact... Like I said, I have moved my tables and a whole bunch of other stuff around. And oh, I'm just gonna try and get this bottle of water. Come here. There it is. Oh. I am currently in the process of setting up. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's take a look. It's a tier six game. All right, but there is an OI, so we will need to tap two key. That's fine. All right, so what we're going to do is 
I am gonna go on probably a mid flank. I'm not gonna push. I'm not gonna push mid. We are cruising at 50 kilometers downhill, flat terrain 47. We will drop down to about maybe 29 going uphill, 30, 26, 22. Ouch! All right, so what we're going to do again, we're going to do the, the typical keep an eye out over there. All right, now bear in mind this tank is designed to play ridge lines, so that's what we're going to do. We've already lost an 846. M Fury and an M6. Okay, so we've got an A43 in green and cut those guys off. Again, I want to work this ridge line. There is artillery here, unfortunately. It is, of course, there's an ARL V39. V39, you've got no view range, and your aim is a joke. Just a joke. Sadly, but true. The uh, V39 has bug rule for view range, and its gun accuracy is worse than the KV2. It is. Uh, never sniping. Never try to go to the back of the map and snipe. It's just no bueno. No, no bueno. Boop. Sorry about that. Got this thing on my phone. So what do I think of the tank? Um, eh. 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 I mean, I didn't get a good map. I, well, I, I wouldn't say I didn't get a good map. I got an okay map for it. Um, we did work the ridge line a little bit. I could have backed off. I should have, honestly, I should have backed off. It's my own fault. Um... Yes, I do plan on playing this tank more. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it on my EU account. This is my NA account, because as you guys know, I've had my NA account longest, and I absolutely love my NA account. And I really wish people would understand what Do Not Disturb means. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So, long story short, do I like do I, do I do I like the tank? Yes, yes I do. It's in my Sherman collection. There are some Shermans I can't stand, namely the Soviet one with the T thirty four turret. I just I can't stand it. It shouldn't even exist in the game. I get it. It existed on paper. I think they made one prototype and it failed horribly, miserably. I might add. But the point is, is what it is. And yeah, um, I, I guess I'm going to have to play at least 
10, 15 battles to, to find the area that it's an expertise in. That it has an expertise in. Um, because there are some out there that it just doesn't. Hello. Hi. Why is my phone vibrating still? I've answered the call. I don't know. Uh, say hi to YouTube, by the way. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> I was doing a video on the Francisco Carlos tank. So... So anyway, guys, uh, how do I feel about the tank? Uh, it's a good tank. It really is. It's it. Everyone's oh, it's just a Sherman. Yes, granted, it is just a Sherman, but there is many different types of Sherman out there, and they all serve a purpose, namely the jumbo. Hold down, be annoying is what it is. You know, uh, you go hold down, 152 millimeters of armor. Even HE tanks like, like the KV-2, when they shoot you in the turret and only do like 20, maybe 22 points of damage to you, they look at you and go, huh? Thinking they're just going to one-shot you because they think you've got the stupid upgraded turret. When it's not an upgrade, it's actually a complete downgrade. This is why I keep saying to people, look at... at oh, yeah, yeah, you get an extra 10 meters view range. Big freaking whoop. Would you rather have the view range knowing that you're going to be slugging it out in the EZ-2, in the jumbo, or... Now, now, thank like the Thunderbird, okay? The the, the, the Thunderbolt, yeah, it's got extra spot. It's got spaced armor on the sides and on the turret ring, but it's still got a great big cacking weakness. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? The gun mantlet and the top here is a great big cacking weakness. HE will go right through it on a KV KV two, uh, KV five. They'll go right through you like you didn't exist. Hell, even the IS two will go right through you like you didn't exist. Now, um. The Frankie, what can I say about it? It's an interesting tank. It is. It is a very interesting tank. It's going to suit a role in my collection, and I will be taking it out. In fact, I, I'm going to be doing a live stream here soon. Uh, it's either going to be on Kick or Rumble or YouTube. I can't remember which because I'm, I'm banned on Twitch still. Uh, I will forever be banned on Twitch, and I don't care. I'm not looking to get the ban unturned. Point is, it's most likely going to be Kick or Rumble. Um... And so what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I will be doing a Sherman day, which means I will be only driving and everything Sherman. So going all the way to the M2 MT, all the way up to the French Revelerice. I will be fire playing nothing but Shermans. I'll be doing a Sherman day. That's it. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give the video a, thank, a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Again, all interactions is welcome. If you have a comment, bleep bloop it down below. I greatly appreciate it. Until then, guys, keep your shows flying. Keep your enemies dying. Your Cobra Commander is out. And I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Peace.